now seems like a good time to sit in the stands. I gotta be honest, I wasn't really looking forward to coming to Williams Grove. The racing isn't always, say, the greatest, but no joke, I'm really, really glad that I did. First of all, the fans really, really make this place, and that is no joke. You know how you go to some places where you go there because the racing is awesome, or the facility is nice, whatever? To me, the best part about Williams Grove, and I'm not just talking shit here, it really is the fans. They are so passionate, and they're not just like individual fans that go to races, it's like a community of fans to meet so many people that were like hey Sprinker Hub I love watching your stuff for me that was awesome but another thing that made tonight's race so special was David Gravel's 100th World of Outlaws win only the eighth driver to ever achieve that which is pretty special considering the series has been going since 1978 I wanted to hear from some of the his peers the drivers um, obviously an incredible achievement to watch as a fan, but I think hear from the drivers and how tough they think that is and what their thoughts are on his achievement. I spoke to two guys who are pretty young in Gio Selzy and Carson Cito, both Californians, both incredibly fast, in great outfits, uh, incredibly strong and have wins this year and probably future World of Outlaw champions really if they stick to it and probably will get 100 wins themselves one day. I wanted to speak to them to hear what they thought on David achieving that. I also wanted to speak to someone who has reached 100 wins and a guy who's reached over 300 who's still with the World of Outlaws is, is Donny Schatz. He's been on the tour since the 90s, which is, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. And I wanted to hear what he thought. What was really telling for me in that interview, which you're gonna see in a second here, is that he is still dejected when he doesn't win. And if you ever question whether Donny wants to do it or not, I think it showed for me to see that he definitely wants to win. To run second at Williams Grove uh, against the top car in the country is not bad at all, right? So I wanted to speak to him and then obviously catch up with David at the end to hear what it means to him, if it means anything, to win a 100 World of Outlaw races. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up. Hopefully you guys enjoy the interviews. And if you're from Pennsylvania and you're watching this, Thank you very much for, for making me feel welcome. I'm only 80 fucking one behind, 89 behind him. So, yeah, I mean, he, he's he's earned his due. You know, he's he's earned it. He's raced for three different elite teams and won with all three of them. So, um, you know, it, it sucks to get beat by him, but they're on their game right now. They're the best car in the country for sure. What's it like racing with David? I mean, you know, he's beatable. Um, you know, they make they're human. They make mistakes like everybody else does. But it seems like their mistakes aren't huge ones. They run fifth or sixth on bad nights. So. Um, you know, it, it, it's hard to beat them for sure. They have a good motor program, same as ours, and um, good crew chief. They, they gel together really well. So, um, in the presence of greatness, it seems like. I mean, I think that takes a lot of perseverance, a lot of years of winning races, and and, and I mean, it, you got to be obviously a really talented race car driver. He's done that in a few different race cars. Um, you know, this one included, and I think that. Uh, Obviously, the results speak for itself. I feel like right now, you know, I'm obviously putting my best foot forward to beat him. So it's, um, yeah, it, it, it makes you feel good that you're trying really hard to beat somebody that's obviously a talented, a very good race car driver. And, um, you know, David, from, you know, when I was, was started racing in 2013, I think he was, I looked at David and he, he was just kind of getting on the outlaw scene and was winning races. And obviously, with, I'm really good buddies with Drew Warner out west, and he's really good friends with David, and that's kind of how we met. He's always been really kind to me, always been really nice to me, and uh, so, you know, I'm happy to see him have success. I think he's worked really hard at it, and he's been out here a while, and um, yeah, I, I you know, coming up, at, trying to be on the Outlaw Tour, I was hoping to win, you know, as many races as him, and, you know, we're going to do our best to put our best foot forward to get to that point, too, but 100 wins is pretty incredible, and yeah, I mean, I'm really happy for him. What's it take to beat David right now? Uh, like, obviously they're on top of their game. What do you feel like uh, your team can improve to, to be that? I think that they're just closing out wins late in races. I think that's tough to do. Um, it's easy to say that, you know, that's what we need to do to be better. But I mean, and we obviously know that that's what we need to do to be better. But it's they've just, you know, late in the race, they seem to be able to charge forward and capitalize on those late race runs where they can have more speed than the next guy. And I feel like, um, you know, the World of Outlaw Tour is like a pyramid scheme building block. Like over the time of your career, you build more blocks and you get to the point where you have the experience and you go into a racetrack and you almost know 
where you need to be or the decisions that you need to make to kind of set you apart from the competition. And yeah. I think David, you know, is probably, if I had to guess, you know, he's 10 or 11 years into this. So yeah. I think when you get to that point, you really have a good idea of where you need to be at each racetrack. And I think that, you know, obviously they're clicking on all cylinders and you put a good driver, you know, in a spot where they're clicking on all cylinders and he's going to win races. Well, he's definitely maturing. It's, uh... You know, it's something that's one of the milestones a person never thinks he's going to reach, but uh, obviously he has. He's done a great job. The guys are really uh, doing a great job right now, so um, you know, hats off to him. It's, uh, it's definitely a tough thing to do, and um, it, it goes by in a, in a heartbeat. So I hope he's enjoyed every one of them because you just never know when the last one's going to be. What's it take to beat David right now? Where do you feel like you need to be better? You know, um, we just got to be better starting the night. Um, you can't you can't dig out of a hole starting the night. You know those guys are pretty balanced all night. Uh, we chase a little bit of stuff, but um, it is what it is. That's sometimes when you're in uh, development stuff, you, you have them battles you have to deal with, and um, that's what we do. We, we uh, you know our partners uh, take care of us and pay the bills, and we try to take care of them. So we're doing the best we can, and uh, we just got to do a better job. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Obviously, uh, this last week is going to set in later uh, in life, or, or maybe a couple weeks down the road, but. You have to be so focused at task at hand. Like all these wins are great, right? But you can't relax till the season's over. So just tunnel vision and uh, just trying to not to lose focus. And you could all and celebrate all this stuff, and it's all great and dandy. But we have a, a big, you know, job that we want to finish this year. And um, the boss and Cody want to Knoxville Nationals really bad. So you know now it's. Two good, two good weekends, get to Knoxville, have a great Knoxville, and then finish off the season strong. So very cool, I mean, to do the Triple Crown and to get the 100 in, in, the, in the last 10 days is uh, really, really cool. A lot of cool things, man, and uh, I'm just a very lucky guy. You've raced and won with a lot of teams. What's different about this team, though? Or do you feel like it's just you in your prime? Like, what do you think it is? Yeah, I think I'm in my prime, just learning, always getting smarter. Uh, Todd gives us everything we need. Cody, probably at the top of his game now, running the Outlaw Tour for now his fourth year in a row. He has never ran the Outlaw Tour before as a crew chief, so yeah. him growing as a crew chief. Uh, Zach being with us for three or four years now, and then uh, Steven, first year with us now, and uh, everything's been working great.